So what is our universe? Everybody asks that, but nobody asks, how is the universe? Nah, that's stupid, back to the first question. Our universe is basically everything we observe. All the galaxies and everything else up to the edge that we can't observe anything beyond. We'll call this a Hubble volume. We can't observe anything past the point where we can't observe anything, so what's past our Hubble bubble? The first level of a multiverse is that there's an infinite amount of space and therefore an infinite amount of Hubble bubbles. So outside of our bubble is just more bubbles. But things get fun when we bring up our bud infinity. When anything probable is given an infinite amount of chance, any and all possibilities form an infinite amount of times. If there's an infinite amount of universes, then it means every single universe exists an infinite amount of times. Techmark estimates that an identical version of you should be about 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 29 meters away, while an identical Hubble volume is around 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 115 meters away. So this video you're watching right now, if there existed a level 1 multiverse, there's an infinite number of versions of you. So this video is being viewed an infinite number of times by you. Thanks. Now you might be asking, is this really possible? This idea is pretty absurd, it can't be real. But the alternative, that the universe doesn't go out into infinity, is that space is slightly curved and loops back onto itself. So if you traveled really, really far in one direction, you would end up in the same place. Curved space was like an idea from Einstein, but it's probably wrong. The cosmic microwave background allows sensitive tests of such finite models, but has so far produced no support for them. Flat, infinite models fit the data fine. There's four levels of a multiverse, each encompassing and expanding upon the last level. That was the first, let's move on to the second. This one gets all funky with inflation. Early in the beginning of our universe, a few really small numbers of time after the Big Bang, space expanded really, really quickly. The amount our universe has inflated over the last 13.7 billion years is about as much that inflated during that small period of time after the Big Bang. The amount of time it took to expand that much was faster than you could say peanut butter by about 1.538 undecillion times. Anyway, the idea is that before the huge inflation moment, the physical constants were malleable in the extreme heat and stuff, but when the inflation explosion happened, it froze all the physical constants to what they are right now. Now imagine a loaf of bread rising. Inside the bread forms little gas pockets where inflation slowed down or stopped. Inside each of those gas pockets contain a level 1 multiverse, while the bread as a whole, containing an infinite amount of gas pockets, represent a level 2 multiverse, each bubble having different sets of physics and dimensionalities. Each of those gas bubbles experienced inflation, which then resulted in different constants being froze. Level 3 is where we get quantum. It's actually pretty popular, known as the mini worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. With the Copenhagen interpretation, when a particle in a superposition is observed, it appears to collapse the wave function and snap into one or the other state. But with the mini worlds interpretation, instead of the wave function collapsing into one of the other states, the observer becomes entangled with the particle in a superposition, splitting the world into one where the observer sees it in one state state and the other world sees it in the other. So in a sense, it remains in the superposition, separated by different worlds where they also become decoherent or completely separate from each other. In other words, think of the Schrodinger cat experiment. Before the observer opens the box, the cat is in a theoretical superposition, being both dead and alive. When the observer opens the box, instead of the wave function just then deciding what state it's in, the observer becomes entangled with the contents of the box and splits the world into one where the observer sees the cat dead and another where it's alive. Now for the final one, level 4. I guess you could say it's the boss. You'll see why in a minute. This one is going to be way more abstract. Basically, it's that our universe is made of math. Sorry people that don't like math. I'm not even going to try to explain this one. I'm just going to read you a bit from the Wikipedia page. <clears throat> our external physical reality is a mathematical structure. 
That is, the physical universe is not merely described by mathematics, but is mathematics, specifically a mathematical structure. Mathematical existence equals physical existence, and all structures that exist mathematically exist physically as well. Observers, including humans, are self-aware substructures. In any mathematical structure complex enough to contain such substructures, they will subjectively perceive themselves as existing in a physically real world. Uh, okay then. So, Basically, there's multiple different universes with different sets of maths, and each level 4 multiverse contains a level 3, 2, and 1 multiverse inside of it. Level 1 solves the initial condition problem. Instead of having one universe that has very special initial conditions for life, instead, all initial conditions have occurred and we're obviously in one that supports life. Level 2 solves the fine-tuning problem. In this paper, Max Tegmark said, If the electromagnetic force were weakened by a mere 4%, then the sun would immediately explode. If it were stronger, there would be fewer stable atoms. If the weak interaction were substantially weaker, there would be no hydrogen around, since it would have been converted to helium shortly after the Big Bang. If it were either much stronger or much weaker, the neutrinos from a supernova explosion would fail to blow away the outer parts of the star, and it is doubtful whether life-supporting heavy elements would ever leave the stars where they were produced. If the protons were 0.2% heavier, they would decay into neutrons, unable to hold onto their electrons, so there would be no stable atoms around. If the proton-to-electron mass ratio were much smaller, there would be no stable stars, and if it were much larger, there would be no ordered structures like crystals and DNA molecules. Instead of the physical constants magically being fine-tuned the way they are in our universe, the constants have landed in many different states across many different universes. We're obviously in one that allows life to form. Level 3 is if the mini worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics was taken seriously. It doesn't really add any new universes like in the previous ones, instead making multiple branches of reality. Level 4 would have different mathematical structures and stuff, answering Hawking's question, why these equations, not others? So, in summary, we live in a Hubble bubble inside of a bubble of Hubble bubbles, where inside of each of the bubbles, reality branches out into different worlds with quantum entanglement, and all this is math. Where math physically makes up the universe, and each universe could have different maths.